when I left, the place was surrounded by cops. And when I got back, the community surrounded the land and the land was taken back. Yeah. yeah. Outrage over the Red House and one family's eviction from it has been brewing for months. A lot of it stemming from a visit by Multnomah County Sheriff's deputies in September when the Kinneys say they were ordered to leave. All I hear is banging on my door. Then I see there's nine sheriffs standing outside. And next thing I know, they're kicking in the door with guns drawn. That's Julie Metcalf Kinney speaking here at a news conference Wednesday. This is not a typical foreclosure case at all. This is a David and Goliath fight. A lot of the speeches tied to how the family got here. My parents were preyed upon by some of the same predatory practices that led to the 2008 financial crash. According to a website set up by activists, the Kinney's troubles began in the early 2000s when one of their sons, William, went to prison for causing a deadly car crash. The family took out a loan against their home to pay for legal fees, but interest rates were high, and the family says even after taking out a second loan to pay the first, the debt crushed them. Over the next decade plus, they claim both loans were sold between big banks multiple times. Payments and paperwork overwhelmed the Kinneys. Finally, in 2018, the family claims a California-based company who had taken possession foreclosed on the house and sold it at auction. The buyer? a Portland-based developer with Urban Housing Development, LLC. Their website, as you can see, is under construction. KGW reached out via phone today. We haven't heard back. We get a little bit and you take it. Fast forward to this year, officials put a moratorium on evictions to keep people struggling amid the pandemic in their homes. But in September, a judge ordered this family out, arguing this eviction doesn't qualify because it was ordered before the moratorium went into place. Since then, police say this camp has slowly formed in protest. From Sky 8, you can see the size of it. Police say they've been called here more than 80 times for fights, threats, and reports of shots fired. Tuesday, Police went again and emailed reporters photos of what they found. Guns and bear mace and a PPB windshield smashed, they say, by people here. Police arrested more than a dozen people but haven't been able to clear the camp. Tuesday night, Portland's mayor tweeted he's authorized Portland police to use all lawful means to end the illegal occupation, adding there will be no autonomous zone in Portland. Wednesday, activists told KGW in one of the city's most popular and fastest gentrifying neighborhoods, they'll fight to keep the Kinneys in their home. This is not a story about an autonomous zone. This is a story of systemic oppression. Okay, now, now we join Maggie Vespa live along Mississippi. And Maggie, we kept you out there just in case. We, we didn't know what was gonna happen tonight if police were gonna show up. They haven't. Um, they haven't been there since yesterday morning, despite what you said the mayor had tweeted out. But with that in mind, we wanna kind of uh, turn our attention to what has been going on out there. We mentioned at the top there was an instance where a journalist was injured. And to be clear, that wasn't you or anyone on our team. But what do you know exactly about that? And what can you tell us about what is happening down there tonight? Yeah, definitely. So that happened yesterday. And just to be clear, it was a reporter from another TV station in town. She and her photographer were walking through the closed off area when basically, and they have video of this, people from inside the protest area kind of got up in their faces, blocked their cameras uh, and told them they wanted them to. When the reporters said, we have the right to be here, we just want to cover the story. They were forced to leave and they were physically roughed up by it. The female reporter, um, she cut her hand and she had to go to urgent care. She was bleeding and it was horrifying. It was absurd. And so today we came here and I said, hey, um, I would like to talk to somebody about this. I would like to see what that was, who that was, why anyone here thinks that's remotely acceptable. And uh, one person who's kind of organizing the protest in there said he was an activist with the cause, said he would talk to me about it. He agreed. It was horrible. It shouldn't have happened. Um, and then as you're about to hear, he didn't even know the extent, the full extent of what happened as well. So here's kind of a clip from our conversation earlier and his take on it. And we're talking about it right now because that's, it will be disciplined. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Is she okay? Like, she, I mean, part of her nail got ripped off. Like, yeah. Like, I like, did not know that. Okay. I was down her son Twitter, so it's, yeah. She's it's so, so nice. Like, She's so nice. Out of her hand and she went to reach for it and boom. She's so nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's my point, man. Like, the whole thing about Adora, like, Genevieve's, what, 5'5"? Five, five, yeah, all of us like her. Life. She's always here. No, seriously. Sorry. Yeah. 
Okay, yeah. Yeah. But we are we are talking about it because that was not okay and we're those people are not gonna be around. Yeah, it was definitely not okay. And uh, by the way, Dan, police sent out a press release today, kind of an update from theirs yesterday, saying that they had heard of assaults. They didn't specify that one um, specifically, but that reporter tweeted it out, so I'm sure they know. Um, and they say basically they're tracking what's happening here, and they demand that this stop and that the neighborhood and their words, words return to peace. But again, as we said, the mayor and police commissioner tweeted last night, he wants PPB to use all legal means necessary to basically end this. And we've been here all day. We have yet to see a single police officer. That said, you can bet we'll be back here tomorrow and keep you guys posted on what happens. Yeah, I think we can guess. We've seen how this typically plays out. But Maggie, thank you so much. I appreciate the insight from you tonight.